Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome to a new episode of our Fixed Perspective Scroller. Today we're going to learn how to make a simple and fast inventory for our game. And I know I'm due with this video for several days already. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, you know, life has unexpected stuff that happens and I really apologize for not being able to keep up with my word of uploading more videos on last week. But right now I'm not going to talk about that and I'm just going to jump straight into the video. So let's go here, the canvas. Uh, you will see we before we already did something similar to an inventory, but it was the quest book. And the quest book holds a lot of buttons for each quest and they are laid down in a grid. So we're going to do something similar for our inventory. So let's go and duplicate the quest book here. And I'm going to deactivate the quest book, just turn on the uh, the new quest book that we created and rename it to inventory. So inventory is going to be, as I said, very similar. Make sure to reset your, your scale and everything here. I'm going to do it here. If we open background, info and viewport, we have the, the this content. And this content contains a grid layout group. Before we set the constraint count, which is actually the fixed column count, we set it to three. So we want to have something like maybe five. And you will realize that if I duplicate the quest button that we had, we went, we run out of space. So what I'm going to do is going to reduce the cell size until I see they fit nice inside the screen. So if I reduce, I see that around 120 will do the trick. So let's match the height to 120. And now we have small buttons that we're going to use as our slots. I'm going to delete all of these for now. And I'm going to change this prefab because right now this is the quest button prefab. And I want to make a slot prefab. So I'm just going to call it slot. And I'm going to change the text to slot. And one more thing you can do is to change the image component and untick the field center option. This is going to make it look just like a frame of a picture. And actually this text, we can get rid of it. And instead of text, we could create an image. And this image is going to be the icon of the item that we are actually holding in that slot of our inventory. So let's rename image to icon. So now we have this slot and we can drag it into our my prefabs folder here. I'm just going to open this folder and drag this. So we created a new slot prefab and I should call it slot prefab just to be consistent with my naming. So I'm going to apply this name and that's not how you do it. You should change it here. Slot underscore prefab and there we go. So now we have a slot prefab with an icon inside. And if you want to get some icons for your game, I went to the asset store and I found this fantasy RPG icon set, which you can use for free, of course, and you can find some paid versions as well, or you can make your own icons in Photoshop or GIMP. And you can also ask or download them from internet, you know, you can find some icons. So just go download, I'll re download them and you can find that they're quite nice. So for example, I will use the, the T, which means transparent sort. So you see, I have a transparent sort here in my frame, in my slot, but we're going to play more with that later in the future. Right now, you will realize that if you duplicate your slots, you will see how they fill your screen. So probably you want to have the right amount so that they're all visible and we actually don't need to have, if you don't want your inventory to be scrollable, you can just keep the content and remove the viewport because it's not going to be necessary. The viewport and the info, because this info here is just the actual scroll rect. You, you can ignore this game object. So you could just have your content and your buttons under the same vertical layout. So it would be something like this here. So content, and then you can completely ignore your info and your viewport. So we can just delete it. 
That's if you want to be always showing all the slots that you have in your inventory. Maybe you have pages, but if you want to be able to scroll down, you should keep that info and that scroll view component. So just follow along with this step if you want to have a fixed amount of slots on your screen, on your on your inventory window. I'm going to revert this to a nothing image here. I'm going to set it back to none. Should just delete this. Okay. And just make sure your content is big so that it pushes the other component down. Okay, like that. So now we have all those slots and we could have any slot with a different icon just to show that it's actually an inventory. So T braces, for example. Yeah, we have some braces. So this is pretty much the the inventory setup that we will need for our inventory, the, the canvas setup. But now I don't want to finish this video without making some code first. So we're going to set a function to toggle the inventory on and off when we press the I button. So let's go and do it. UI manager. So first we want to make a reference to our inventory. So here, inventory, we're going to make a variable, a public variable, transform. Um, I'm going to just call the inventory. And we're going to initialize it in the awake function. So initialize inventory. And I'm just going to set inventory equals to canvas dot find inventory just like that and this is going to set the inventory inside this variable so that we can access it from whatever we want but now we still need a function that function will toggle our inventory so let's make it here public void toggle inventory like that and this is just going to find the inventory that we already have set a reference for, get the game object, use the function set active, and we're going to set it active because I don't want to have a function to set it off and have a separate function to set it on. So we're just going to turn it into whatever it is not. So we have a property in inventory dot game object called active in hierarchy. So this returns true if it's active in hierarchy and returns false if it's not. So we're going to do the opposite of whatever it's currently. So if it's on, we're going to turn off. If it's off, we're going to turn on. So now that we have a toggle inventory function, we need to call it from somewhere. Right now, you can realize that my UI manager does not have a update function. So if you want the easy approach, you can just here make a void update and inside use the following uh, if statement if input dot get key down and you use the key code dot i then you toggle inventory okay so we can try this to show you that it actually works Remember, the UI manager is inside here, and you can see the inventory was set correctly. So now if we press I, you see there you go. I turns on and off our inventory. But personally, I don't like having an update function in my UI manager. So what I'm going to do is just, so just cut, and I have a class called input manager. Every time I need an if input something, I'm just going to do it from my input managers update function. So I'm just going to have it down here. What you can do is something like this. And you don't need this void update again because we already have it up here. And we do it there. But now you see we cannot find this toggle inventory function because it's not set in this class. So what we do is get the instance of our UI manager. So UI manager dot instance dot toggle inventory and now we can actually find an instance with this function so we can do that if now we try it and let me save here if now we try this 
we're going to run the UI managers function from the input managers update. So we don't need to have one update for each class, but we can have all the functions being called from the same input manager. And if I try it, there you go, it works. So eventually I want to do the same thing for all the functions that I need to press something like, for example, my player class or in other UI manager, request manager or whatever. Everything is going to be called from the input manager, but I'm going to do that in the future. That's basically the video for today. We made this very simple grid layout for our icons of our items. In the next video, we're going to learn how to drag one icon to another slot. So for example, just clicking here and dragging it to the other side, uh, we're going to use something similar to what we did on the last episode, which was the floating UI here. So we're going to use the same technique to make that this icon here follow our mouse, and then we're going to drop it into some other button. So please stay tuned for the next episode. I will try to upload it as soon as possible, hopefully today or tomorrow. Again, I'm sorry for my delay. Uh, you know, you never know when you, you have some issues with life. I don't want to go into too personal details here. Um, but yeah, uh, I really hope that you guys will stick up with me and continue to watch my videos because I really enjoy making them. So again, thank you and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Peace. Psh.